So welcome to the third lesson in the module. This lesson looks at photography and cinema in some detail, uh, outlines the key developments in photography and film projection from the camera obscura through to photography and film printing. And it also identifies the important figures who invented and inspired photography and cinema technology. In the 18th century, panoramas were very popular, specifically paintings of landscapes which were produced in 360 degree formats. It's thought that the interest in these images are what helped to provoke the development of the technologies in photography and cinema. The illusion in the panoramic paintings also triggered lots of change in paintings and performances of continuous space and moving image at that time. The term was coined in 1787 by Robert Barker to describe his paintings shown on a cylindrical space. The trompe l'oeil technique was essential to the panorama as it helped to produce the illusion of tridimensionality, and this would be applied to a cylindrical surface. The Ido Fukusen, invented in 1781 by Philip James of Lutherberg, was an attempt to perfect the illusion of representation of nature. The effects of movement add a lot of life to the landscape scenarios which are created for the Ida Fukusen, and so for that reason it's been associated closely with the first form of movie making. So the Ida Fukusen inspired many other devices, um, and during the 19th century a lot of these devices evolved and started to become involved in performances, and we'll look at that a little bit later on. Uh, as it leads to the cinematograph. But another one of these early inventions which uh, had a big influence on the beginning of film, photography and cinema is the diaporama. Um, this was developed by Franz Niklo Koenig in 1815 and Koenig presented these shows uh, which were composed of moving images and that used a technique of light passing through eight paintings uh, each with different levels of transparency. So the paintings were made with a uh, kind of tracing paper and uh, this is a relatively new process um, in a way of presenting images to the audience. So this was first exhibited in Germany and France and it was a really popular way of presenting images. But for this to be possible, another great invention was also required. The inventor of photography, Joseph Nisifor Niepce, is known to be the person who captured the first image. Interested in lithography, he started by making a couple of artworks by capturing images with the camera obscura. His skills were usually to trace projected images onto a screen. He started by making copies of artworks and he projected these artworks through the camera obscura onto a screen and fixed the image with silver salts that were sensitive to light. In 1816, he produced the first photographic images in history, um, but none of them have remained because of the preservation process required. In 1826, later that century, he also produced positive images for the first time. So he mastered this technique of reproducing images and he named this procedure heliography, distinguishing between helio engravings and the copy of existent engravings. Louis de Geur further developed the work of Niepce in photography. He also invented the diorama. This was a theatrical device uh, capable of producing to audiences this sensation of deepness, a depth on the stage. This effect was possible through the layering of hand-painted translucent panels, all arranged in a straight line, and he really refined the play of lights and shadows and sounds which added dramatic emotion to the experience. The diorama was a unique and popular theatre show. An observation made by Peter Mark Roger, a British theologian and physician, stimulated several scientific developments in 1824. 
Roget published a paper called The Explanation of an Optical Deception in the Appearance of the Spokes of a Wheel When Seen Through a Vertical Aperture. Although rather a long name, this paper defined the phenomena of persistence of vision, described by the way of a human eye retaining images of an object that are momentarily out of sight. The paper stimulated scientists to demonstrate the phenomena, and it laid the basics for sequencing and animation of film. Around the same time, the thaumatrope was invented by John Ayrton in Paris. This was a toy, um, and it was made with two images, one on either side of a disc, and this disc was held by two pieces of string. And it was an optical illusion. The illusion happened with the emergence of the images, which was caused by the stretching of the string and the twisting of the disc. And because the disc spun quickly, the illusion made it appear that the two images were existing in the same place. Joseph Antoine Ferdinand Plateau was a contemporary of John Ayrton in Paris, and in 1829 he invented the Fenachistoscope. The device uh, was built with two discs, one of them radial, with small equidistant windows that the audience could look through, and the second disc was flat and contained a sequence of images. When both discs spun, the synchronization of the windows produced an illusion of movement and the effect of animation. This is the first animation technique to be invented. But similar independent experiments are happening also in Belgium by Plateau and in Austria by Simon von Stampfer, inventor of the stroboscope projector in 1832. Dagur continued his experimentations, inventing the daguerreotype, a camera obscura with a lens and a copper sheet with uh, sensitive layers of silver nitrate. This device was commercialized and the first photography of a person took place in 1837 and was exhibited at the Science Academy in Paris. Following the pioneering work of these two inventors was the polymath William Henry Talbot, who invented the photographic process as we know it today. His first photographic negative was made in 1835, when making a solosia of his house in Lackcock, Wiltshire. In the following years, the technique improved and resulted in the calliotype. The method is based on a paper with a silver nitrate and gallic acid, which was light sensitive when exposed to light. It's then developed with chemical substances and fixed. This procedure produced a negative and to make the positive, a paper is washed with melted wax to make it transparent and later exposed to light. The procedure was then patented in England in 1841. The British mathematician William George Horner invented the modern zoetrope. Although there is a reference to a previous zoetrope in China around 180 BC, invented by Ting Huan. In China, this invention was called the pipe that makes fantasies appear. But William George Horner took the idea from Plateau of the Fenachistoscope and perfected it. Horner called the zoetrope the daedalum, translated as the wheel of the devil probably in reference to the Greek myth of Daedalus. This device was a circular drum with slits through which we look to watch the drawings organized on a stripe of the drum. And when spun, the movement becomes apparent and the animation works. Another invention that contributed to cinematography is the anastromic or photographic revolver by the French astronomer Pierre Jules Janssen in 1874. The photographic revolver, or the Jassen, as also called by photographers, photographed all stages of the lunar eclipse with the same plaque. So this device was composed of two discs and a sensitive plaque, and the design was inspired by the Colt revolver. 
But this is the predecessor of the chronophotographic device which we'll look at later. Mewbridge, Marley and Albert Lond all focus their analysis and study into the decomposition of movement into still images. Around 1872, Edward Mewbridge developed a method to photograph human and animal movement by using multiple cameras that captured images in a sequence. Emil Reynaud in 1876 created an optic toy for children, changing the context of optical devices and proving that they could have a use beyond science. The following year he patented it with the name Praxinoscope. This new device overcame previous distortion issues and also provided a brighter projection system than any other device before. The Praxinoscope received an honorific mention at the Universal Exhibition of Paris in 1878. In 1882, Etienne Jules Mari created the photograph gun and chronophotography. The gun, composed of circular film, was able to take consecutive photography from the same point of view. The representation of time and image constitutes a semiotic problem which will be studied throughout the following centuries. In 1888, Emil Reynaud patented in France the optic theatre, the first device without short cylindrical animations. This was possible due to prolonged stripes of the images, the use of several drums, and an intricate network of lanterns, mirrors and lenses. This huge praxinoscope was specially designed for public shows. In 1892, the pantomime Luminosis was presented to the public for the first time at a museum in Grevin near Paris. With a musical composed by Gaston Paulin, the show was composed of three animations, Pauvre Pierrot, Clown et ses chiens, et une bonne bourre. The shows of 500 to 700 handmade slides were organized in sequences that could be rewound and fast forwarded. This extended the playtime of the show. The 19th century sees the prolific invention of devices that capture light, animate image and explore the phenomena of retinian persistence. To name a few of these devices, the list below explains the diversity and the expansion of this technology. And this continued to fascinate audiences in dark rooms, setting the basis for moving image and beginning cinema, its theory and its artistic practice.